Zell Boy Army, how are you all doing today? Got another bit of a different video for you today, a bit of a reflection back on FIFA 20. I think it's a cool video though, I did some of it on stream and it's something I'm excited to show you guys. We are ranking the best nations in FIFA 20. So, when you look, I'll show you them. Oh, that's the French team for example. Um, when you look for nations, the nine nations that you get here, Argentina all the way down to Spain. We're going to pick them all in a 4-2-3-1 as I think that's the best formation in the game. Some nations might have benefited a bit more if we had um, given them a different formation. But that's the formation we've gone for. I've tried to pick that what I think is the best meta team on the game. So you might see a player get picked over, a player who's better than him in real life just because he has a better card on FIFA. We're going solely based off the FIFA cards. Um... And then I wanted to put Belgium in as a 10th team. Maybe there'd have been another team that would have been better than Belgium. I don't know. But Belgium, they had a lot worse team than I expected. They have a few good players, but um, they weren't as good as I expected. So here's an example of the French team. I'm not going to say where they're ranked yet, but I've picked them in the 4 2 3 1, tried to pick the best team I could from them. So that is how we're going to do it. Let me know where you would rank the teams if you think I've gone wrong in any of these. It's a video that's taken me a while to put together, but I thought it would be a cool one for you guys. Hope your weekend leagues are going well. And when this video goes live, I will be streaming over at Twitch um, about an hour or two after it. Maybe 8, 9-ish I'll go live tonight, my weekend league. Thank you for watching the video. Let's get into it. Okay, starting us off at number 9 is Italy. They've come bottom of the pack here. These are one of the nations that maybe could have benefited from a different formation. They have one of the better defences. It's got to be one of the better defences. Even this left back here, I've never heard of. is pretty good if you look at his stats. Five star week for like Zambra. Two very good centre backs. Donnarumma plays pretty well in the game, but they don't have an out and out great tops keeper. Um, Tenali's good, but a little bit off the ball of some of the uh, top CDMs that other teams have. And Varai is good, but a little bit slow. Can't shoot that well. So the CDMs aren't the best, whereas most teams have pretty great CDMs. <clears throat> and then the attack. They only had one really good five-star week. So I could have put Belotti or Lasagna in, but I don't think they justify it. Um, Insigne um, is, is a pretty good lamb. Giovinco, Ram, Cam, Lamb would have been pretty good. Then Immobile, stats are good, but he won't play that well in game. So on paper, I just didn't think the Italy team... None of the teams are bad. We're talking about the nine best nations in FIFA. At this point, June, after all the tots, they're all going to have great teams. But for me, this was the weakest of the bunch. The bottom four, I would say, it was debatable. I could have swapped any of them, depending on what you like in the team. But Italy coming at number nine. Okay, coming in at number eight. This might be a surprise for some, but Germany... Um, again, this could be debated. I mean, they've got one of the top keepers in the game, Stegen, but I don't think the keeper's that essential a position. One of the problems I found Germany had was they had such an abundance of great CDMs. If you could play five CDMs, they'd have been all right. You could have put Kroos, Balak, or Goretzka in. Uh, people might say they'd swap Mateus or Kimmich for some of these, but they had some of the best, probably the best depth in the game at CDM. They had a lot of options there. Um, Boateng's a top centre-back, not quite up there with the best, but he's very good still. Hummels is good, but a bit slow. Da Costa was the best right-back, and he's he's good, but not as good as some of the other ones at this point. And then this guy from the rest of the world, SBC, SBC um, team of season. Decent card, but again, not that special, not what um, you want at this point in the game. Uh, he's better than most people would expect. The weak foot, though, lets him down. Uh, CDMs are fantastic. Royce is a very good cam, but I want a five-star weak foot. And Germany just didn't have any great five-star weak foot options that I could really find. Uh, Gnabry, Lamb, very good. Havertz is more of a cam. He doesn't feel that quick because the acceleration game. Not clunky, but not amazing on the ball. Um, their attack was good, but the team that are above them next, you'll see why I've put them above them. On paper, the German team looks good, but when you look into it, it maybe isn't quite as good as you expect. Coming in at number seven is the England boys. England have a really solid team on this game, 
but a few weaknesses that we're going to talk about, and that's what holds them back from moving further up the list. The defence is up there as one of the top few in the game. They have probably the third or second best right back in the game, but we're putting him at left back because they didn't really have a good left back. Um, and wan is so good that we'll just put Trent there. He's got four star weak, so it's still pretty good. Gomez and Rio, both within a sharp being in the top 10 centre backs in the game, so a great pair there. Wambasaka, obviously a beast at right back. Uh, the keeper, Nick Pope's actually pretty good in the game. You can't get him anymore if you didn't do the SBC, but um, still a very good card. Uh, Phillips and Henderson. They're good, and defensively, they're two of the best CDMs in the game. But going forward, even though they have decent shooting and dribbling, they're a bit limited because they're both three star, three star. So whilst England have good CDMs, they're not top, top CDMs. I mean, the big issue is in the attack, there's just no five star weak foot. Um, you could put Greenwood there, but I still think he's worse than these cards. They're all good cards, um, but none of these are really top tier attackers. And England having a bit of a limited attack in terms of the defensive mids and then no five star weak foot. For me, put them down the list, even though they had such a great defence. So England coming in at number seven. A lot of quality in depth, to be fair, but yeah, just the lack of a out-and-out -out top five-star week for probably puts them down the list more than maybe expected. Coming in at number six is the Spanish boys. So they have one of the better keepers in De Gea. Uh, he doesn't have a TOTS card, but it's still a very well-rounded keeper card. Um, he's one of the best keepers on the game still. Has the saves with feet trait. Uh, you could put Reguilon or Bachike there, but I chose to go for Reguilon. Because I think Bachike is the second best centre-back. It's crazy, but PK and Hierro and Poyo just won't be as good as Bachike on this game simply because they don't have the recovery speed. So it's going to be him with Ramos, Carvajal. Carvajal is one of the top right-backs in the game. Ramos is one of the top centre-backs. So Spain's defence and keepers up there is one of the best. The defensive mids, it's a bit weird. I mean, as with Spain, you expect a bit of tiki-taka. David Silva, who's just come in, is that good um, all around with okay defending, not, but not that great physical. But I'm still going to put him in this team because his card's still amazing. Uh, not Carlos, Luis Alberto, similar card basically to the David Silva. Um, so this Spain team, the defensive mids aren't the best out and out defensive players, but they're still very good. And then the attack, we have two five star weak foots in the striker and cam, which this is what puts them above England for me. And then two pretty good outside cams in Fatty and Moments Raul. Um, they're a bit of a different team compared to some of the international teams. It's nice to see that Spain have a bit of identity with the tiki taka, lots of great possession players. But yeah, for me. Um, Spain, edge above England, Italy and Germany just because the all-round depth and then the five-star weak foot's a cam and strike. Like, this Pozuelo is a crazy card compared to what I expected when I first looked at him. But um, yeah, and some very good players on the bench as well. So Spain coming in at number six. Okay, coming in at number five, we have Portugal. Portugal's defence is one of the worst, especially when you include the keepers. They don't have any top-tier defenders after tops, really. Um, we could have put Pepe in at centre-back, but we've put Semedo in because we want some recovery speed and pace. Ruben Diaz is a bit slow, but he's still a good centre-back. Um, but that's the thing. The Portugal defence is pretty bad. If the Portugal's defence was a lot better, they'd be up there for one of the... Like, if they had a defence like France, or England even, They'd be one of the best defences in the game. I'm not even exaggerating there. Um, but the defence really lets them down. Sanchez is a top CDM on this game. So that's a big boost for them. Bruno Fernandes is good, but not unreal at this point. And then the thing that really puts them up... and Some people might say they deserve to be lower because of the defence. But then some might say they deserve to be higher because of the attack. Is they have two of the top five strikers in the game. And Eusebio's moments cap. And tops or team the Ronaldo. We've got another five-star weak foot in this really, really insane nanny card. Uh, Moments Figo, fantastic card again. Um, the depth isn't quite as good in this team as some of the others. But I think Shearley on the base, they've got one of the best CDMs in the game. A top attack, two of the best strikers. Um, this Portugal team has to be above the teams that we've already had before. And some people might even argue they should be higher simply because their striker and cam are just absolutely insane.
Okay, we come to Argentina now. And Argentina was a nation that I was expecting to be a bit worse than they were. Um, they've got a pretty decent keeper from the Latin America, Copa Libertadores promo that we saw. The defense is pretty makeshift. Like we've had to put a CDM and a right back at centre back because the best out and out centre back they've got is probably Scream Otamendi or Juan Foy from the Premier League SBC. They've got two very good fullbacks. Zanetti is brilliant on this game still because jumping doesn't matter that much. Uh, this Martinez, very good card from Ajax. Um, even off came, he'll still be fantastic. Bustos, just put a sentinel on him. So, you're going to have them. It's one of the better defences, honestly, which is a bit surprising. This Fernandez is way better than he probably should be. So, they have one of the better CDMs in the game. He's probably near the top 10 CDMs in the game. The run's obviously very good. But then, even though they don't have a five-star weak foot attacker, the four attackers are that good with the overall strength of the rest of the team that we're putting them in at number four team of the year. Messi, obviously insane. Um... Aguero, obviously a fantastic card. Um, Martinez, really, really good card. Dybala. i put above them above Portugal because the defence is better. The CDMs overall are probably better because Sanchez and Fernandez are pretty close, but then Varon's better than Fernandez. And then Martinez and Messi aren't better than Ronaldo and uh, Eusebio, but Aguero and Dybala are better than the outside cams at Portugal. Portugal and Argentina was a very, very close one. Very tight. But I just edged it to Argentina because I thought they had the better, well-rounded squad. For Portugal, they also only had an 85 keeper, which was a big letdown for them. But that's number four. We're moving into some of the very best teams now at number three coming up. Okay, the top three nations that we've got left are the Netherlands, Brazil and France. I'm not telling you which order they're going in in terms of the top two, but we're coming here now with Netherlands. The Netherlands have an insane defence. The left back not being anyone good, I mean, we had to put De Vrij out there. That was quite a big letdown, and that was one of the reasons that they maybe didn't challenge France or Brazil for second or first. Um, the centre backs, they have the best pairing, they have arguably the best keeper in the game. Dumfries is very good. They have the best CDM pairing out of any nation. In, they have the best CDM and then De Jong's around top 10. Uh, they arguably have the best cam in the game. But then the outside cams, who are pretty good, aren't quite up there with some of the players from France and Brazil. And then, I mean, for the striker, you could have gone Cliver, you could go Moments Bergkamp. There's quite a few you could pick. I think Van Basten's underrated on the game. Um, basically... The three attackers there, which is important in the best team, and then not having a proper left back have hurt them. They probably have four players who can get into the best team in the game in Cruyff, Hullet, and the two centre backs, but then they're let down in other areas. Whilst none of the other players are bad, when you get to see the France and Brazil team, they're pretty insane. But Netherlands are still, nonetheless, are an insane team to use on the game. Coming in at number two is the French team. It was a tough decision between the French team and Brazil. The French team was even tough just to pick some of the players. I mean, the defence kind of picked itself. The keeper, you could go Loris if you don't trust Bandanda. The CDMs, I thought, like, I kind of had to put Zidane in. A lot of people would put Vieira or Kante over Ewa. I just prefer how Ewa plays on the game. But, of course, I could see Vieira or Kante. Um, for me, France have the two best fullbacks in the game. Um, Lala and Theo and Anders are the best in their position in my opinion so that's a big one for France albeit not the best positions um, Ben Yedder and Mbappe are two of the best strikers in the game Ben Yedder and Mbappe are more strikers than Cam's um, Henri and Griezmann are not as good as they should be and that is what slightly hinders them and holds France back from being the number one team um, the French team just has crazy amount of depth like there's quite a few positions you could have swapped players in. Some people might put Blanc over up a Mikado. But the French national team on this game, the World Cup winners for a reason. They've got a great history, of course, France. So many quality players. The attack itself is insane. Uh, Moment Zidane doesn't play as well as he should have. If he does, that could have helped push France to uh, number one. Uh, Varane, 
Upakara, two of the best centre backs of the game. Not a great keeper again, which holds them back a bit. And I think when you see the Brazil team, and obviously they're number one now, I think you guys will agree why. And let's get to the number one team. Coming in at number one is the Samba Boys Brazil. This team is insane. If we go through it compared to the French team, we've got Alisson in there who's miles better than Mandanda. Tellers, who some people would say is the best fullback in the game at left back, but I prefer Fio and Andes. Uh, Diego Carlos, uh, maybe a little bit worse than Veron, but some people prefer him. Uh, Militao's about as good as up in Mercado. Alberto's slightly worse than Lala, so France would be ahead at this point. Alan and Paulinho are probably similar to Awa and Zidane, because Paulinho actually is probably better than Moment Zidane. It's just this attack, though. This attack is insane. They probably have the best striker in the game in R9, the best cab in Neymar, two of the best outside cabs in the game in Dino and Moments Pele. The front four is just insane. Like, There's a reason that front four would cost like nearly 40 million, somewhere around 35 to 40 billion coins. Um, they have the best quality in depth as well. Uh, Marquinhos would have been a great centre-back. Mariano and Carlos are great fullbacks. backs Cecilia's great. Coutinho's good. Gabriel's just a bit slow, otherwise he could have been in there. Mora's ridiculous. Richarlison. Kaká obviously not even making the team. Moments Garincha, that uh, tops hook. They just have so many insane players, this Brazil team. And they'd be the most expensive team in the game, but that, like I said, there's a reason why. I think this team doesn't really have a major weakness. Every player in the team's in, in not far off being top tier. They have the best player in probably keeper, uh, striker in cam, to the outside cams. Like uh, The Brazil team, I thought they were going to be number one. I thought it was going to be them or France. But the Brazil team, absolutely insane. Deserve the credit that they're going to get to be number one. The countdown we saw, I've got my phone here, let me read it. We had Italy at number nine, Germany at number eight, England number seven, Spain number six, Portugal number five, Argentina number four, Netherlands number three, France number two, and we finished it with Brazil number one. Hope you boys enjoyed this video. If you like this type of content, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll be back tomorrow with hopefully some more spicy content. Have a great evening. Thank you for watching. Good night.